Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase how we can create an application JavaFX where we have a draggable node, which is going to stick to a grid. So, in this case, I draw a background of white and gray squares. I'm going to have the background, so it kind of looks decent at least. We then have this black square, which we can then drag, and it's going to stick to our grid. So, I made another video quite a bit back where we just have the ability to drag and drop these nodes like a rectangle and it's just gonna be completely free which i'll link in the description but here we're now sticking to a grid so just the basic concept there's quite a few mathematical calculations but we then simply find on which of these grid our mouse is in when we drag and we then simply jump the square to that grid so as long as i'm dragging which I am right now inside the same grid, nothing changes. But as soon as I go from one grid to another, it's gonna jump. And we can see here that we then simply can drag and drop it around on this grid. So from kind of like the Java Vaccine Builder part, we only have an empty anchor pane with an ID. We then have a few different objects that handle some different parts of the program. I simply have a grid handler, which draws my background grid. So these are background squares. I then have a draggable maker grid, with an object that takes in a component, which is a custom class I created. We simply have a rectangle and then a start position, X and Y, because we need to keep the start position when we're moving around the way we're doing it. But simply, we just have a component containing a rectangle in this case. We then simply call our draggable maker grid dot make draggable on our component and it's now draggable based on a specific grid. So grid handler draws the grid, draggable maker grid makes components draggable. And of course we then make a component and add this component, which is our rectangle, to our scene so we can see it. But first quickly, how does the grid handler work? So how do we actually draw the grid? We have first a grid base which is just an abstract class that takes in all this basic input for like the plane width, plane height, then calculate how many tiles we have across, how many tiles we have down. We have the size of each grid, total tile amount, total grid amount, and which angle pane it's, it's all going to be drawn on. Just a simple Java abstract class, takes in a bunch of values, and we have some getters. We then have our grid handler, be a child to our grid base. So we're now able to use all this basic information, to calculate the position of our background black and white grid. Have some colors. As you see here, we get all the inputs. We pass it to our superclass, our grid base. We then simply call update grid, which simply goes through i to tile amount. So we calculate the total amount of grids. We then find for each of the grids their x and the y position which is going to be the top corner of the grid here, which is then simply calculated and then drawn. And then we, instead of just doing white, gray, white, gray, as you can see, when we're doing it like this, this checkerboard pattern, it's going to be white, gray, and then gray. So all the last element is going to be the first element as the next first element. So it's going to be gray, gray, white, white. And it's just done simply by doing, calculating if it model is two or not adding the x and the y position together. But that is the concept of drawing the background. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail with all of it, but I recommend if you wanna learn more, actually have a look at the code yourself. I would put a link to the source code in the description. We can have a look at it and try to run it, which is definitely the best way to learn how this works. And try changing a few things and see if you can, yeah, get it to work. Maybe change the colors, change the amount of grids and so on. We then have our draggable make a grid, which can either be done on a node or a component. So at first I just did it if you just want to do it on rectangle, but preferably we do it on a component, otherwise we get a few issues. So just keep this in mind, because when we are moving around a node or a component, we need to know which start position, then subtract it each time because of the way that JavaFix is calculating x and y positions of rectangles. 
But what it really ends up doing is more of the same thing we did when we draw the background. Is that this specific grid has a position up here. We then simply check if the mouse is within this grid. Then move our rectangle to this grid. And again, there's a bunch of math calculating the position, getting the position of the mouse, divided by the grid size, modulus to grid tiles across or tiles down for x or y. And then we multiply by the size of the grids because we're kind of first getting like the number of the grids with the first line. So we're getting this grid 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And then we know if we are at grid 0, 1, 2, 3, we would need to be at grid 3 multiplied by 50, which is the grid size in this case. So we're going to be position 0, 50, 100, or 150. And we're going to simply use this to calculate the x and the y position of our component. And then because we need the way that JavaFX is moving rectangles is that they are moved compared to the start position. So we take the, the current position subtracted by the start position. Otherwise, it's going to be jumping around a bit because there's an, some problems with the concept of keeping positions because it's all relative to where it started. So it's not relative to its parent, it's relative to where it started, at least the way we did it here. Could probably change it to relative where its own position, but this works. And again, it might be a bit confusing, but if you want to have a look at how it works and actually have a clear understanding, I suggest you grab the code and try running it again and play around with it. I think that's probably the best way to actually just learn. I also have in here my draggable maker, which is from the last video, where we can simply just drag and drop without being on the grid. So let me actually just showcase. So instead of being draggable on the grid, I can make it draggable, but just plain draggable, like that. And if we now run it, it's going to be draggable like this. And you can see it does not care about the grid at all. Which can also be fine, but I actually just thought it would be very interesting to make it draggable on a grid. And maybe if we're doing some more complex situations where XY I like to draw something, like some basic logic system from a computer, it might be easier to calculate if we know everything's on a grid, see like what's next to each other, how does thing interact, maybe make something like a small animation of something. But that is the basic com concept of my draggable maker and my grid handler when it comes to drawing a simple grid on an anchor pane and then making a rectangle inside a component draggable on the grid. So if you enjoyed this quick demonstration and walkthrough of my basic concept of making stuff draggable on a grid, please leave a like and subscribe and wish you all a wonderful day.